Ah, the humble keyboard. Everyone knows what they are, and everyone's probably used one at some point. Keyboards are everywhere, from desktop computers and laptops, to phones, to even the touchscreen kiosk at your favorite store. Most keyboards are physical membrane keyboards, which have a typical soft feel to the key presses, and they aren't really anything special. A lot of keyboard enthusiasts, however, instead prefer a mechanical keyboard. Mechanical keyboards differ from membrane keyboards and then a physical switch lies under each key. Depending on the brand and type of switch, each keyboard may have a slightly different feel to it. Regardless of the switch, all key switches have a few characteristics. Each switch has a certain actuation force, the amount of force required to press down the key. These typically range from around 40 to 60 grams, though again they depend on the switch. Next, each switch has a set travel distance to record a key press. A switch will have two points here. One for how far you have to press the key down to register a key press, and one a bit higher for how far you have to pull it back up to stop the key press. Lastly, each switch is typically classified as either linear, tactile, or clicky. Linear switches have no tactile feedback whatsoever, and you will not feel anything unless you bottom out your key press. Tactile switches have a small bump to them that allows you to feel a bit of feedback as to when you've hit the actuation point. Clicky switches, on the other hand, are pretty similar to tactile switches, but with a much more exaggerated bump, which often produces much larger key presses. If you really want to go all out, you can invest in backlit switches, which have an LED light in them that can either produce a solid color, or even sometimes custom RGB backlighting, depending on the keyboard. On top of the switch, you'll find the keycap. Keycaps are typically made of either ABS or PVT plastic. ABS is a much cheaper plastic compared to PBT, while PBT is relatively expensive. However, PBT also tends to be much more durable and resistant to wear compared to its ABS counterpart. Printing on the caps can be done in many ways. A user can choose either from blank caps without printing, standard printing on the top, or front printed caps, commonly referred to as ninja printing. All of these can have their legends printed in one of several different ways. Pad printing is the most common, and you'll find it on most keyboards that aren't mechanical keyboard, as well as maybe some older keyboards that are. The legends are simply ink printed on top of the cap, nothing too special. It's the cheapest way of printing, but it also causes a noticeable bump where the printing is because there's that extra layer of ink, and it can wear down over time. Additionally, the wear can cause the printing to feel a bit strange, as parts of the raised print will wear at different speeds. To remedy this, manufacturers have made dye sublimated keycaps, which use heat to embed the printing into the plastic. This causes the plastic to effectively be dyed rather than having a layer of ink on top. While this is permanent, because it's dyed, you're a bit limited, because the dye has to be darker than the material of the keycap. You can't use dye sublimation to print white on black keycaps. It just won't work. Most keycaps these days that come with keyboards are double shot keycaps. Double shot keycaps are made with two different colors of plastic. The inner layer that is hidden contains a raised letter, and the rest of the cap is molded around it in a different color. This means that the legend will literally never wear out, as it is actually part of the keycap itself. This also gives the added advantage over dye sublimated caps in that you can use whatever colors you want. Alternatively, you can also get laser etched caps, which are somewhat common and involve etching the legend into the cap and filling the gap with paint. This is still paint on the surface though, so it can still wear out, but it will last much longer than pad printed caps. Because it's still paint though, you also want to note that there is less of a texture than with pad printed caps, but it may still be noticeable to some people. The last thing to note about mechanical keyboards is their size. Full-size keyboards come in either 104 or 105 key layouts, depending on if you're in the US or somewhere else that doesn't use the ANSI layout. Smaller keyboards, 80%, also commonly referred to as 10 keyless keyboards, drop the numpad off of the board to make it a bit shorter. If you want to go even farther, you can go to a 60% keyboard, which drops the arrow keys and the other right-hand modifiers. Or 40% keyboards, in addition to that, also drop the F keys at the top, making them really small and really portable. If you were so inclined, you could even get mechanical numpads. If you have a smaller, more portable mechanical keyboard to go with it, or you just want a numpad to go with your laptop, you might want to pick one of these up. 
Mechanical keyboards are wonderful keyboards to type on, and there still is a lot to learn. If you'd like to learn more on the various form factors or types of switches, we will cover those in future videos, so make sure you subscribe for those and stay tuned. Anyway guys, you know the drill. Like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you hated it, and leave a comment down below if you have any suggestions. Do you guys use a mechanical keyboard, or have you ever tried one? Let us know what you think, let us know do you have any preference, favorite types of switches, or anything. Let us know. We'd be happy to hear it. Anyway, thanks for watching guys, and as always, don't forget to subscribe.